How's it going guys and welcome back to Robot Arena 2. Today we're going to be taking a look at the building system and how to start your first team and get your first bot started. So here you can see we're on the team HQ menu where you can select your team. Um, we're going to create a new team down here at the bottom real quick and we're just going to call it test. And we're going to keep the alien head logo. To get into the team you either double click it or click highlight it and continue. Here you can see our team HQ. You'll have the team motto up here, and here you can access the events and stuff. And here are our six bots, as you can see, we don't have any right now. So to get started, you can either double click, or once again, highlight and click workshop. And this will bring up the building menu, starting with the overview tab, which has your bot name, its weight, what weight class it's in. You can change the heading, uh, which is which way it's facing, which we'll get into in a minute, and take a picture of it for your uh, Team HQ menu. I, do, I usually do this part last, honestly, so I'm just going to skip this all for now. We're going to go right into the chassis. Here is where you build the body of your robot, starting with the structure design. Here you can see we have a grid here with this uh, green circle. And simply uh, click and you know you can make a whatever, whatever shape you want. It's going to make a little square here. And that's that. That's going to be the, the, you know, the shape of your robot. This is going to be a basic square. If you want, you can move them make a little bigger square there you go um, but one thing you need to notice is down here you have steps so step one is the, the base of it if we go to step two we can so you can see we got a box here so on step two we can change the height make it low make it really high it starts in the middle in step two you can also change the points at the top and what that mean it means is if I take this and drag it in you'll see uh, come on there you go. You see, it still has this outline because that's the bottom. If you look at our image, we now have a slanted, sl a slanted back part because right now this is the, this is the front of the robot right now. So we got to slant it back. That looks kind of cool. We're gonna keep it like that, and we're gonna hit finished. And next, you can go into armor. It comes with four different types of armor, and technically speaking, the one that's on it is a type of armor right now. But we'll talk about that in a different video. I'm just gonna throw titanium on this one for today, and we're gonna hit finished again. So when you're actually placing the components, you can see we have a, the armor is removed or hollowed out, whatever. You can see the base plate. When you're building a robot, you need really two things when you're building. You need A, a drive system, which is a motor and wheels, and B, some kind of weapon system. Usually, sometimes you can build just a pusher robot that pushes people around or whatever, but typically you want to have some kind of powered weapon system, whether that be a spinning blade or a... Uh, a, a hammer or something to do damage to another robot. So what I do when I usually build, I start with my drive system first, lay out those components. So to lay the actual components out for a drive system, all your motors are located in the mechanics tab. So you can see we have a couple different motors, the powered steering unit, which is pretty awful, you don't want to use those. But this is a, a drive motor, that's a drive motor. These first four are the, the drive motors. These ones over here are um, snapper motors which are used for um, quick actuation like a hammer to slam down on something and then the the piston is a burst piston is a stabbing motion and that uses air pressure which we'll get into in a second here so I'm, I'm going to build a basic just four-wheel drive robot with a, a burst piston with a spike on the end or something like that so what we're going to do is start off is I think I want to use these Red Bird spinning motors. Here's a layout of the motor. By default, you can see it has these two green tabs. Um, by default, this one's selected, but this is the attachment point. So if you see, if I hit attach, it'll place it like that. If I hold down shift, I can ro and move my mouse, I can rotate it. If I hold down the control key and move my mouse, I can raise it up or down. Now, you what you can also do, and click here and get rid of it, you can also select this attachment point. Which for for you know wheel I'm doing the drive system right now so for putting a wheel on that it's kind of useless but for other components it can be kind of nice to be able to tilt it um, position it differently in the body and other ways you can't just simply rotate it so we're gonna go back to this attachment point we're gonna throw I got I'm gonna do two wheels for this one be easy so we're gonna rotate it so it's nice and even and we're gonna just place it in this back corner kind of stick it out a little bit. See, when it turns red, it means it's the part of it's touching the body that it can't touch. So we're going to scoot back a little bit, place it there. Grab another one, rotate it around. 
a little too far. And on the other side, do the same thing. Throw it down. And now you have your two drive motors, drive system motors, which you can attach a wheel to up here, the wheels tab. We have a lovely selection of wheels. I'm just going to throw these guys on here because they're kind of cool and they're really grippy. Boom. All right. Now, typically speaking, you could either go in and start programming your motors or you can continue on with the rest of your building. Um, for this video, I'm just going to go ahead and place all my components and then show you how to wire it all up on wire quotation marks, wire it all up after. So like I said, so this is going to be a basic bot with drive wheels and then we're going to have a piston that shoots a spike out the front or whatever. So we're going to go over here, select this burst piston. Um, here you can see we have a drop down menu for this one. For this component, it's different lengths. So let's just do a, a 80 centimeter burst piston. I want to put this right in the middle of the robot. Now keep in mind, the, this robot that I'm building is not necessarily going to be very efficient. It's probably not going to win. It's just you know, a quick demonstration. So we got the piston there. So the piston needs air power, and the drive motors are going to need battery power. So if you go over to this first tab, we have the power tab. These two blue ones are the air tanks. And then over here, we have three different types of battery. So I'm just going to throw in these small CO2 tanks in here for this one. Oh, God, it doesn't fit. That's unfortunate. Um, maybe we should... Oh, I know what we can do. We can put it on top. So here, I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to raise it up a little bit. There we go. Beautiful. Put the air piston right there. And we're going to throw... This is a pretty small robot, so we'll throw one of these medium-sized batteries in here. I, this is more than enough, and I'll, I'll explain a little more on batteries in a different video. Just so gonna throw this down there, and now we can put our weapon onto our piston over here in the weapons tab. We have all kinds of different things: you have axe heads, you know, battle axe, different blades, hammers. I'm gonna put one of these iron spikes on. Attach it right to the front of my piston. There you can see it pokes out the front. And now the last component you need is back under the power tab is this robot control board. Every robot needs to have this because this is how you wire up your, you know, quotation mark remote control or your keyboard um, to the motors and to the pistons or whatever on your robot. So we're just going to throw this over here. Now you can see this wiring tab is selectable. You know, without the control board, you can't select the wiring tab yet. So we'll throw the control board back down and we'll go into wiring. And here you can see we have a, a pretty generic uh, blank controller here, which you can add either a switch, a button, or an analog joystick to. So for this robot, we're going to need a forward and backward analog stick. Uh, I'm going to wire to the W and the S key. I'll put that one over here. Positive is forward, so we're going to do W. Negative is S. We're also going to want a left and a right, which is going to be uh, A and D. So again, I'm just going to say positive is A. Negative is D is how I, how I always set it up. We're also going to need to fire the cylinder, which for a cylinder, a, a burst piston, you're going to need a button. And we're going to set that to spacebar. So when you're wiring it up, the way you get it to work is you select the control you're wiring and then you select the component that you're trying to control. So in this case, we're going to select this motor here. It's going to give us an option on which way you want it to spin. By that, it means when I hit W, which way do you want the motor to spin? In this case, it's going to be when you hit W, you want this motor to spin clockwise because it's going to go forward. And when you hit S, you want it to go counterclockwise. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind is that on the other motor, it's going to be opposite. So either you either follow the layout I'm doing is can be applied to any motor on any bot type. But if you want to figure it out yourself, I, it helps me if I turn the motor so I'm looking at it from the front. So we're going to turn this one. So this one you can see when we want to go forward, this motor actually needs to spin counterclockwise. So this one's going to be opposite of the other side, counterclockwise and clockwise. Now for the left and right, I'm going to go back over to this side. Left and right are A and, A and the D keys. When we go hit A, we want to rotate to the right, sorry, the left. 
So what that means is that this motor is going to want to turn clockwise and counterclockwise. And now, unlike the forward and backwards, this motor is actually going to be the same way because when we want the whole body of the robot to spin to the left, this motor needs to go counterclockwise. And I'm sorry if that doesn't make any sense, but if you, if you think about it, it works. If not, just follow these, this setup and this is going to work. So again, for this one, you want it to be the same as the other one. So you can see this one is clockwise and counterclockwise. So this one's going to be the same, clockwise, counterclockwise. And this setup works for any any drive system like this. The, a, the forward and backward are going to be opposite, and the left and right are going to be the same direction. And then for the button, again, select it, select your piston, and select fire. And that's it. It's wired up. You can paint it, but first I like to test it. So we're going to click up, click up here at the test robot. Oh, it's backwards. Change that in a second here. So you can see if I go A, it spins one way. D, it spins the other way. W and S, forward and back. If I hit space bar, it'll stab our little piston out. Pretty cool. So if we can go in here. This is the painting menu. You can either do a regular color, like here's green. Right in the middle, green, paint entire, and there's that green. If you wanted to, you can do a texture, like uh, here, let's do brushed aluminum, boom. And on top of the texture, you can do a surface layer. If you pay attention to the texture, you can put like diamond plate on it, boom, and it gives a little texture. Um, edges, let's just do a dotted rail, why not, throw the edge on. And then the final thing is decals. And here you can go, let's just do a gear. You can change the size. And when you hover over, it'll show how it's gonna sit. So that's like a little too big for this robot. So make it a little smaller, uh, a little more. That's nice, right there. All right, so as you saw when we tested our robot, it's actually backwards. The back of the robot, or what I, what I designate as the back of the robot, it spawns in facing the front. So what we're going to want to do is go over to the overview tab. And when you hover over the forward heading one, it'll show you which way the game is saying is the front of your robot. So as you can see, the green line is pointing out the back of what I built as the back of the robot. So what we can do is we can move it here and spin it all the way around and put it so it's facing forward. We also take a picture while we're here. Position your robot where you like it. Let's do like right like that and hit the snapshot. It takes a beautiful picture. And then when we hit test, you'll see we're now facing forward. Now in the in the testing menu, it's a little fun, you can drive drive around, make sure it works obviously, but you can also spawn in some crates if you want to do a little destruction, you know, some cinder blocks. You know, just play around with that. But the main idea is, you know, you get in here, you make sure when I hit the buttons that I want to use, the robot behaves the way you want it to. So then, like I said, he's back over here. We can name the bot test bot. And you can see it weighs 248.7, I, I guess it's kilograms. It doesn't really say, but everybody says it's kilograms, which classifies it as a lightweight bot. Everything saves in real time, so you don't have to click save. Just hit back to the HQ, and you'll see we have test bot here. He is lightweight, and here's his picture. And just like in the last video, if you want to enter him in a robot uh, tournament, you go to the team schedule and you select a tournament and you select which bot you want to enter. That pretty much wraps up the basics to the uh, building. Is if you want to learn anything specifically, stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on specific bot types and different building tricks and more advanced things. But this will get you started. Go tinker around with the building. It's a lot of fun. And uh, stay tuned for those additional tutorials.